Hi guys, this is Mike. I'm back with another Python Django tutorial. Um, last time I said that we would do a, a lesson on the template language, um, but uh, unfortunately because of time restrictions, I haven't got time to actually fit all of that in. So I'm going to do something a little bit shorter, but possibly something that's going to be a bit more helpful to you in the immediate future. The subject that I'm going to cover is the, is the Python Django uh, admin interface. Now, Python Django comes along with a, an interface that allows you to you to manipulate your model uh, data through the web page rather than yet having to do having to do it through the command line. Um, we saw in tutorial two, I think it was, that uh, when you were inserting uh, information into the database, we did that through the Python shell or through the Django shell rather, um, and that was well it was boring to say the least but it got the job done now we're more advanced and we, we know more about Django it would be nice if we had a little tool that would help us to do that a little bit more simply and maybe even get some other people involved in putting content into the system whilst we're still building other parts of the site so how do we get this admin interface built in well the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our project folder inside of our Django uh, example. Now this is the same example that I've used in all the other um, pro the, all the other tutorials. So if you've gone past through there and you've still got all the code from the previous tutorials, this should fit straight in there. Now what we're looking to do is we're lo looking to open up the settings.py file, and in there. We're looking for the installed apps section and under there you should find that it's already got written django.contrib.admin which is the module that allows us to use the admin if you just uncomment that that's all we need to do in the settings.py file the next thing we need to do is we need to tell the django framework about the urls for the admin so how do we do that well the first thing we do is we uncomment this line which imports our admin system from the django contrib system that we've just made the settings py aware of and then we run auto discover and that causes the admin system to look through all the models in our current django project and see which ones it should be um, displaying in terms of editing on the website and including the URLs. Now the final bit we need to do is look down here and just include the URLs from the admin module. So in much the same way as we included the, the URLs from our article uh, app that we've been created, we can do the same with admin. And that's the beauty of uh, Django is that you can take modules or, or apps as Django likes to call them and pull them out of existing websites and drop them in somewhere else. And as long as you configure the URLs and, and tell Django that it's something that it should pull in in terms of code, then it should be good to go. So again, that's what we're just doing here. We're just basically saying, give us the admin dot site dot urls and include them for anything that we append the word admin onto the url for now finally if we go back into our folder for our app which is article we need to create an admin.py file and this basically says to the Django framework this system has been configured to work along with the admin module so by putting that file in there the system, the framework will already know that we need to put three things in there the first thing we need to do is we need to import the admin object second we import the model that we've got so from our app article in the models file import the article class that we've defined there
So this next line is basically using admin.site and the register function to, to register this class with the admin system so that it knows or is aware of that admin class. Uh, fix that okay so there we go now I might already have this admin page open because I was messing around with it earlier yeah that nicely broke everything so that's awesome what we'll do is we'll just restart our server so that it now it becomes aware of our new pieces of code that we've put in our files and we're just going to go to admin URL on our local host and it's telling me that I've misnamed my mo modules patricle instead of article and that's in my admin py file so let's go back put the T in the right place restart the server like so and hopefully that's going to work now what didn't happen there is because of my browsers remembered my password it didn't give me this login page so that's what you should have seen when you first pressed the admin url and this is basically the username and password that we set up in tutorial number two where we're dealing with databases it asked us for us, uh, if I remember rightly, it asked us for um, our administrator account. And this is the one I set up at the time, which is Mike with my password. If you can't remember what yours is, then maybe you should go back to the second tutorial and go through there so that you can reset up your database with your proper admin username and password. Once you can do that, then you can come back here and log in. Just click the login button and that should bring you up here and then you'll get the admin for Django which is very much simple or much more simple rather than the uh, the task of inputting stuff through the shell so how simple is it well we've got um, the add button on our articles list we've also got uh, groups um, of tables now these are the tables that are created by our sync command when we were when we were first doing our example in tutorial number two, um, and it created groups, users, and sites as part of the default set of tables that Django would use from the database. This is the only uh, database table that we've actually physically created ourselves. The rest you get for free, and it's all part of the admin system. And part of Django's framework so let's just focus on our articles one you have an add button which basically lets you put in a title a body a date and how many likes and that's pretty much uh, exactly the same way as we did it before except it's nicely laid out and it's probably a bit more user-friendly you can then click the change button and that will give you a list of all these things all of the existing records also if you click articles the title that will actually give you the list as well so there's more than one way to get into that part of the page we can click on an individual article and it will pre-populate the page for us and if we were to change any of that and click our save button over here that would update that and all of this is without us writing a line of code to actually do any of this database work. It simply uh, comes for free with the admin side of Django, which is awesome because that saves hours and hours of coding when all we really want to do is just get at our content. So what else can we do? Well, it's one less or one last function that we can take advantage of which is in this section called action so you notice we've got tick boxes all the way down there we can select multiple or one if we want to 
and this will allow us to delete the selected articles. So we don't have to go through individually with each one of these records. We can delete groups of them if we need to. And all of that is part of the default set that you get with Django administration. So that's the end of this tutorial. Um, I hope this was informative and, and, and good for you so that you learn something. Um, if you like this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to know more, um, then please subscribe to this channel and you'll get automatically updated next time I upload another tutorial for you. If you have any suggestions or anything that you'd, you'd like to learn about, please leave a comment in the box below. Thanks for watching.